Hey guys, we're out here today in the Tillamook National Forest looking for some mushrooms. It's late fall, so we don't really know how good it's gonna be, but I'm excited. And uh, here's what we're gonna find today. This is a perfect, oh, I lost it. <laughs> oh, here it is. This is what we're gonna find today. Or at least what we're trying to find. Look at that. <laughs> Little baby chanterelle. Ooh. Yeah, that's a good start. All right guys, hope we find some more. Let's do this. All right, so I just found a good little patch. Look at this. You can see right there, one right there. There's another one up there. Oh, that one's already been picked. Look at that, someone's already picked this one. I mean, it feels good, could have been an animal. This is a good looking one. So there's a lot of debate online whether you should cut the mushrooms or whether you should pluck them. I'm gonna set this up real quick. So the debate circles around leaving spores to make sure that the mushrooms reproduce all right. So I'll show you how to cut them. And what you want to do is kind of poke around the bottom and find where it, kind of where it starts going into the actual dirt. So there's some undergrowth here and then just do a clean cut. And that actually kind of got, that kind of got plucked anyway. Yeah, so I kind of dig down, kind of gets white down there. All I do is I just have my knife and just kind of press through it and it comes off in a, a nice, clean cut and that's a that's a good looking chanterelle right there also what isn't really up, much up for debate is using a mesh bag so you see this is actually like a laundry bag and what this allows is that when you're carrying around your mushrooms the spores can fall out through the mesh and make new mushrooms so I got a nice bag like that I'm thinking they're gonna be up against because the first ones we found are kind of oh look at those those are big ones right in your shadow <laughs> didn't even see them. So we just found this huge, huge ones. Look at that. Massive. This is a great, great looking mushroom. Oh man. Look at that. Doing good already. <laughs> My wife just found a really good one. You can see from here but well, this is a really good looking one. And when you walk up to these mushrooms, you wanna be careful, because if there's one, there's usually more. Oh yeah, I see there's more right down in there. So let's get this one. Oh, he's a pretty one. Feels real nice and firm. And then there's these other ones up here. I brought our little burner and a little pot, and we're gonna cook up some of these mushrooms out, out, in, out in the woods, so that'll be fun. All right, let's go find some more. Oh. Now we cook the mushrooms. So we got our burner, or our fuel, our cute little burner here. So this guy's pretty neat. He folds out. He's got a built-in ignition. Fold these little feet out. And we just put it right on there. Perfect. Now we got our cook set. For this, we'll just cook it on in the pot. We got cute little plates. Our spork. Now, let's prep the mushrooms. So today, we're gonna have some rice and fresh chanterelles. 
So I want to pick a couple of these. All right, so I'm going to rinse these off first. So you can start out just by picking off these things and then get your knife ready. You'll notice some of these spots like here are kind of brown and squishy, so you just slice those off. You don't really want to eat those. So cleaning off just the big debris, and then we'll run over some water in a second. Lightly use your thumb or your, your hands. This is easier at home when you, when you have a, a sink, but as long as there's no big goops of mud or pine needles on there, it's pretty good. A little bit of dirt never hurt anyone. Clean ones. cut these into smaller parts. I like to just cut them into chunks that are decent size. These are gonna shrink down real good when you cook them, so don't make them too small. I'm gonna take a break from this real quick. I'm gonna I'll finish cutting them up. Oh yeah, you can finish cutting them up. butter in there first. So what I like doing, putting a tiny bit of butter in there just to help with the uh, heat distribution. And then when they, when we boil off all the, uh, the liquids, that's when we'll put more butter in. So I'm gonna put some of these cut ones in there to start boiling off the water. It already smells so good. Turn it down a little bit. Let those start weeping. Don't want to crowd the pan too much. I like to get those thick stems cut up to little bite-sized pieces. It smells so good. Yeah, you can see the water starting to... We did not put that much butter in, but this is just the water starting to, to leak out of these. And you'll have a pool in there for a while, but we're letting it boil off. Mmm, this smells so good. My rice, what I'll do, I'll have a bunch of, it's already cooked, so I just need to heat it up. But I have a bunch of buttery, mushroomy liquid at the bottom after this. I'll cook the rice up in that batch to make it go to the next level. I'm excited. I love rice. Oh, another thing, which I forgot, it helps if you put a little salt in there with it. It helps draw the moisture out quicker. So that's another thing if you're in this first phase where we're just doing a light bit of butter and we're trying to get the water out, uh, a little bit of salt helps a lot too. And you want to salt it anyway because salt is delicious. So these look like good size bites, ready for round number two. Look how much moisture is coming out of there swimming in it now but all this will evaporate off real quick actually and you want to watch for it because as soon as it's done evaporating that water off you want to put butter in there and salt and I, a little bit of garlic if you have it it's turned into a really good day got a lot of mushrooms today I'm pretty happy with that so we want it to cook more in butter and less in its own water I am gonna cut off another bigger pad of butter I love how easy this is to use. And you can see how much it boils down to. This thing was crowding the whole pot a second ago. These are almost done already, but we're gonna let the butter 
cook them up pretty good. Turn the heat up and get a little brown on them. It almost smells like baked bread, baked store, baked bakery. It smells so good. All right. Got a nice bowl here. I'm gonna take them out with a spork so I can keep that butter in there. See it trying to burn to the bottom. Turn it down a little bit. We weren't done with the butter. It may not look like much, but damn, that it's gonna taste delicious. That's really good. Do one last little mix around. Now we eat. Mmm, it's so good. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Even just the rice alone tastes good because it's got that chantel liquid in it. Alrighty guys, well, thanks for joining us today. We had a great day out. This is delicious. I hope you learned a little bit about hunting for chanterelles or other mushrooms. And unfortunately, this is a late season chanterelle, so we might not be able to do it again until next year, but there'll be other adventures for the winter time. But thanks for joining. Take care and I hope you learned some. Mm-hmm. <laughs>